All right, all right, all right. Welcome everybody to a little bit of Starfinder prep. Looks like my sound is working. Excellent. So I'm going to be going away and getting together with a bunch of friends and sh introducing them to Starfinder. I have this introduction to Starfinder campaign. I've run it a couple times now for different people. So the campaign itself is pretty much set. I'm probably going to be looking at it a little bit, see if I can tweak the maps, make them look a little bit better, maybe add another aspect to it. Um, but I'll be taking a look at that later. Right now what I need to do is finish up my pre-generated characters for everybody who's going to be jumping in. Now I can take the time to build characters. They're just going to pick from what's there. First thing I need to do though is I need to change the scale so you guys can see a little bit more of what's going on. Um, and those of you on your phone, if this, there's a part of it that you're really interested in, jump onto your computer. Uh, it'll be on YouTube. So check it out um, and you can look at the deets there. So if you're going to change your scale and what it does is it basically makes everything bigger or smaller. And so if I did that right now, made it bigger, which is what I want, it's going to get rid of my chat window. So to fix that, we right click on the chat window, make sure it's unlocked, and we're just going to throw it up a little bit. Take here, left click and drag it to make it a bit smaller. We're going to take these and right click, unlock it, move the modifier, the dice, unlock, move. So for the dice, there is a lock, you just click. For the modifier, you do right click again and it pulls up the ability to lock or unlock. So um, the scale UI is all one word, slash scale UI and you can go from 50 to 200 I'm going about 110 and we'll go 115 a little bit better make the uh, chat window a little smaller alright so now I can move my stuff back down Alright, so open up the characters. You can see here I have a total of nine to choose from. I was finishing up Balsh the Witch Warper. I want to make sure he is finished. I'm about, I do believe he was, so let's check. Make sure he was finished. These are all level 1 characters. I'm probably going to level them up to 2. Just so they can get a little bit more of deer of, of... Have a little bit more to do. Level 1 characters can be a tiny bit restrictive. It looks like we're good. So what I do when I build characters... Especially with something like this. Where I'm doing... As a dungeon master, I'm building a lot of them myself. I made a note, so you click over here under player notes, character creation. Uh, and I do this for D&D too, although for D&D it's not quite as complicated. And so I'm going to open up my languages, note, because I'll need that as well. You can take any note and drop it down into your hotkey. So I'm doing that. Alright, so what this does is it reminds me of the order of operation. And it also has the list because it's very easy, especially with something as complicated as D&D or Starfinder, to forget, oh, I didn't give him any weapons. Oh, I didn't. I forgot to give him his spells. I forgot to give him a feat. Uh, all these different things that they do, languages, what languages does he speak? Oh, I forgot that. Um, so starting equipment, all these different things that you do. So I have a little list. 
the uh, first thing you do is race then you do your theme class um, we'll be going over this a little bit more detail as we have two characters left to finish building all right so first thing we're going to so we just want to make sure skill ranks is next skills uh, he has a total of four and he spent four so we're good now feet we did the feet we got the feet equipment in the inventory he's got all of his equipment and then the notes page he has his languages filled out the information up here all right so we are set and ready to go So I was correct. I did finish Balsh. So now we're going to go to we have Redacted and we have Zagon. Um, Zagon is a Minotaur adjacent race. The no, sorry, the end. Noir. So Zagon is a Noir and Redacted is a gray so the traditional aliens you think of with the big round heads and the black eyes no nose that's what a gray is and that's what redacted is um let's see so we have a so, couple soldiers we have three soldiers which warper i think i'm gonna have redacted be a operative Let's take a look at the classes. So classes are under character. Go to classes. So the biohacker is okay, but they're very, they don't do a whole lot at level one. Um, mechanic, mystic, we can have him be a mystic. We have two mystics already though. We have an empath mystic and we have a soldier soldier. Oh, I guess we don't have two mystics. Maybe I'll have him be a mystic. Um, an operative precog, solarian, dakanomansa, Alright, so Solarian will be okay. Just because for a Noir, a Solarian? Sure, we'll go with Solarian. Alright, so before we get to there, we'll close the characters. So before we get to here, let's go ahead and take a look at our list. So we have race. So now theme is background. So if, since he's going for, you can see he's already, the race already put in his uh, stats. He has plus two intelligence, plus two strength. Um, all right, so I'm looking at Solarian. Let's take a look, click it. Charisma lets you channel to your connection, so Charisma is your key ability score. I did not realize that was the case for Solarians. High strength score makes you better at melee attacks. Yep. Alright, so that's cool. Um, so we're good with that. So I'm looking at what they get. They get the Solar Manifestation. They do get us. They already start with those two. Sure. We'll go ahead and go with Solarian. Um, these are experienced role players, so. I'm not as worried about some of the more complicated classes. Uh, a lot of times I won't let, uh, you know, it's like I'm not building an opera, uh, I mean, I'm not building, say, a, uh, a precog or a nanocyte or a mechanic. Um, I'm not familiar with evolutionists. I have no idea what that is. I haven't heard one played on a podcast and I haven't read up on them so I'm not sure about those 
Uh, I'm also not allowing a um, Vanguard because uh, those are all the ones I mentioned except for maybe the evolutionists I don't know about the evolutionists but the other ones are all very complicated uh, and so if they were playing a campaign that would be different I would absolutely let them play but uh, as a one shot just to somebody who's never played Starfinder I'm gonna keep it to the more simpler classes alright um, <coughs> All right. So, to um, but first, but first, we want the theme. So we go to here character themes. Theme is your background. <coughs> what you were doing before you became an adventurer. Give me just a moment here. And we're back. All right, so we're going to grab the um, first thing is theme. So we're looking at themes. Now that we know what he wants, we want to boost his charisma. Um, so there's a, let's take a look. Uh, there is in the right here ability points from race and theme. So we can open up this table doesn't have all of the themes because I you can see I have a lot from the no the characters operations manual but um, icon and Xeno seeker both give you charisma for the themes that are in this in in your um, core rulebook this is from table 2-2 from the core rulebook by the way Um, icon might not be bad. Let's see. Be fun to role play that. Thanks to Illustellar transmissions and drift travel, the galaxy is smaller than ever, and this connectivity has facilitated your ascension to celebrity status. You might be a famous performer or a celebrity scientist. Celebrated scientist. Celebrated. Um, but either way, you get recognized on the packed world and in associated systems. So a Salarian is sort of like a monk. They tap into the energy of the universe around them and stuff. So I don't really see that really fitting this. Of course, you can do whatever you want. And it's just a one shot. It's not that important. But uh, I think Xenoseeker would be simpler and easier. So let's go to the character operations manual and see I don't remember what sensei is con okay law officer is wisdom noble scion is charisma All 
Alright, yeah, I'm going to go with Noble Scion. That's nice. It gives you charisma. He's the son of somebody famous or daughter. So let's go here. Bloop. That boosts his charisma up to 11. Alright, so now this one goes to 11. So now we do ability scores. So Starfinder is really nice in that. Robin, hey. Oh, absolutely. You can be here. You can help. Um, and we're just building the last two characters. I only had... Um, at one point, I had 15 characters. But then switched when we switched to Unity, I lost several of them. So I'm rebuilding. Um, last time I ran it, I only had six to choose from. So I'm adding three more I've had two um, on this I'm on the second one now so absolutely Robin you can be here um, so what I'm working on now I was gonna just add that anyway go to my ass ets we're gonna go to all so this one is a noir and as you can see Noirs have this is the actual the iconic picture, so it's basically a four-horned minotaur. Is what a noir is. So I'm just throwing in the uh, the portraits. So that as I'm talking about him and or her building it, you guys can have an idea of what I was looking at. Um, actually, I'm going to go ahead and throw this. Go to my images under campaign, images. I made only eight. I don't give a damn. Take him or leave him. <laughs> exactly. Here's the images. And then we're going to go on Noir. Why, do, why is there a bunch of them? One. Same. Oh, he's casting a spell. I'm casting a spell. And then the Alien Archive one. All right, so I'll keep this up for motivation. This is who we're building. So as I said, he's going to be a Solarian. For those of you who aren't familiar with what a Solarian is, send you a sneak peek in Discord. I saw that. I have not looked at it yet, though. I saw that it existed on my phone, but I haven't looked at it yet. Um, so let's take a look. Oh, there we go. See? So, Robin, who has made a lot of awesome stuff on DM's Guild, Robin Nix, NYX, definitely check it out. Uh, go to dmsguild.com and buy all her stuff. Uh, I have a couple cool things, but her stuff is a lot cooler. Uh, she's doing, she's building her own, writing her own campaign setting. Uh, and this is so now we're doing she's showing some of these uh, her wild folk from this setting and that's what we're going to be playing very cool I like the idea of the unikin bear folk couple unikins nice kobold boring eh. feline two felines and two and a canine and a draken, okay. Also boring, but very cool. I like the rest of them, very neat. Um, hopefully I won't get stuck with the kobold or the draken. Very cool, so we'll see how that plays out. Very nice. 
exciting stuff. Anyway, so getting back to, I love the Unikin. They are my favorite, to be honest. Yep. I hope that that horn is used as a weapon. Maybe uh, put some barding on it. Maybe cover it, you know, with has a sheath that you can you know, make a helmet with it that covers it. Uh, so you can put some, maybe a silver or a adamantine sheath over the thing so you can stab people with it and not have it break. Alright, so as I was saying, the Solarian is a... Um, so going back to our list. After we do the ability... So ability scores in, in Starfinder are very simple. You have... 10. Everybody starts with 10 points. There is no scaling. You just add 10 points any way you want to your stats. Um, I'm not opposed to horn augments. That's right. That's right. So, uh, this they can, I mean, uh, Noir, which is this race, can also have horn augments. There's pictures of them with piercings and different things hanging from their horns and um, so because they have four of them too you can have things that you know, little chains that connect the two or um, little holograms the people walking on them and things so this is Starfinder man take it to the next level so you can see with our theme and our race we have bonuses already uh, so we want to go ahead and add those ten points in so Everybody needs dex. I'm not going to add a bunch of points into it, but dex determines initiative, just like D and D, initiative, how well you shoot, um, and how easily you dodge out of the way of things. So your armor class. So definitely don't want a negative to, to dex. Um, but these are big boys, so we're just going to leave it at ten. So that uses up two of my ten points. So Charisma is their main stat for their abilities that they do. So let's go ahead and give him five points, putting him at 16. So it uses up seven. I have three points left. We'll boost his strength by two, giving him. Fourteen. We have one point left. Intelligence or con are both decent. Um, I'm actually just going to give it to intelligence because why not? I feel it. I'm feeling it, man. He's a smart cow. Um, all right. So there we are. So that's his stats. Now we add class. Solarian. Boom. So Solarians are different. They are unique to any of the role-playing game I've ever seen. They tap into the um, essence of the universe in regards to... So, so this is how they put it. The stars guide the planets with gravity, create life with light and heat, and utterly consume worlds in supernovas and black holes. A Solarian understands that these acts of creation and destruction are not opposites, but rather two parts of a natural, dualistic cycle. You seek to be the agent of that cycle, an enlightened warrior with the ability to manipulate the forces of the stars themselves. Um, So there, are, basically, he, you can do things that allow you to tap into the photon energy of the universe and the graviton energy of the universe. So it's cool stuff the Solarians can do, especially as they get up high, uh, higher levels. All right, so that's what a Solarian is. Close, close, close. Close down the class. We don't need that. All right, so now we need to apply these abilities so we're gonna zip through here make sure everything is done so a racial trait is gore they can charge um, 
and they can charge through difficult terrain. All right, let's see. Smart cows come from California. Nice. <laughs> Happy cows come from California, but if you say so. Uh, Maze Mind. Speaking of speaking of smart cows. Um, A noir with one rank in piloting or survival gains a plus two ability bonus. <laughs> they can do piercing damage with their unarmed strikes. <coughs> Basically just saying their horns. Alright, and then swift. Oh, they have a base speed of 40 feet. That should have been applied automatically. It was. All right, we're going to go to our actions and see. Don't have an unarmed strike here. Um, so if you right-click on the page under weapons, you can then, uh, this should do. Nope, that's not what we wanted. Add weapon, there it is. Alright. I'm just I'm not gonna call it on our strike, I'm just gonna say it is horns. Open it up to just like you would in D D. Check it out. This is not most natural weapons are analog or I mean archaic. So they have a problem with we're dealing with natural armor and stuff. But horns are not. And so it does 1d3 lethal piercing damage. So properties. We're going to go here to damage. And we're going to go to add item. I'm not sure how to do 1d3. So I'm just going to make it 1d4. Not going to worry about it. Let's see. Is it one of the options here? It is. Okay, never mind. So, I just realized maybe I do know how. Alright, so if you right click on the six sider, then go up here to the custom dice, you have D3, D2, and D0. I'm not sure why you would have a D0, but anyway, D3, and then you just drop it on in. So this is a 1d3. The type is P for piercing. He uses his strength. At third level, he'll be able to do more damage. He is proficient with it. Okay, good. Let's roll the damage. There you go. So damage, a little hard to read in this, but it says horns piercing 1d3, you roll three, nice. Okay. Going back to the abilities page. So he's all set here. If I was playing this as a campaign, I would put the charging ability as I would add it to the combat tracker, as a way to add it to the combat tracker. Just to remind the player they can do that. For this one shot, I'm not going to worry about it. Um, all right, so they have different class abilities so I'm just going to open them all up click 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 now I have all four sitting here and I can just go through them all and see what they do you gain additional insight choose two additional skills and add them to your list of class skills excellent so we'll look at this here 
So Starfinder, I won't go into a whole lot of details. I've spent a lot of time on this on other streams, but basically you have a class skill, which so uh, like a warrior would know a little bit about athletics. He would know a little bit about medicine, battle medicine, that type of thing. So those are class skills. As long as you take one rank in them, you get a three point bonus to that skill. So for a example, you have physical science, which is a class skill. See, that's what this symbol means. For intelligence, um, as you may find a better example, uh, here we go. So stealth is a class skill and sleight of hand is not a class skill. So if I add one to sleight of hand, you add in your dex bonus, which in his case is zero. So it's plus one. But because stealth is a class skill, when I add one to dex, you get that one time three point bonus because he knows about it by because of his class. So his total is four. So I say all that to say he gets to add two additional skills to make them class skills. I always like perception. He's already got that. That's good. Maybe medicine would be a good one. Survival would be a good one being a minotaur type creature. Culture and computers is also really good. I'm going to make culture a good one. And then we're going to make... I'm really leaning toward computers, although piloting is a good one for, because as because of his race, he gets a bonus. Um, what did that say? Uh, the abilities, I forget. Part of his maze mind. Piloting or survival, they get a plus two racial bonus with that skill. Survival. So we'll give him piloting. Let's give him piloting. So there we go. So what I do is I like to clarify a lot of things, both in D and D and in Starfinder. So skill adept, you get two stuff. So I put what they are here. He got piloting, and we also gave him culture so culture and piloting <laughs> so now we close this out solar manifestation so this again remember we talked about how he they tap into the polar and the graviton forces of the world. So uh, you get a choice. You can either have a weapon or you can have armor. And these, there's a, if you think of the old Tron, the first Tron that came out, the good one, there was this little bit that would fly around and that's how I try to describe it to my players this little bit floats around them he can reach out and grab it and then it either becomes a weapon made of light or armor made of light um, in this case I'm just gonna make it easy and give him armor so as with armor he can form that solar moat into a suit of armor made of stellar energy that outlines your body. It appears to be made of glowing light or solid darkness as determined by the appearance of your solar manifestation, but it can be any shape you choose. Plates of solidified stellar energy, a form-fitting suit of crackling energy, or an aura of stellar plasma. The general design has no impact on function, doesn't give the armor any special abilities. All 
right, so he gets um, you, this gives you this is on top of your normal armor and it gives you plus one to your armor classes yes there are two armor classes and Starfinder so we're gonna go ahead and open these up a little plus symbol up here and he gets a miscellaneous bonus of one and one again because you have a choice we are putting what it is here armor alright now stellar mode so once the fight starts you start tapping into the universe around you and you draw on either the, the graviton forces or the photon forces um, and then when you get to three rounds of focusing on one or the other you then have a special ability that you do um, so we're gonna go to abilities I mean we're gonna go to actions we're gonna code these in real quick I don't believe they are coded anywhere but we'll double check real quick and see go under spells and we're gonna go with oh that's right you can't do it this way never mind starfinder you can't do it with um, D and D you can't alright so right click we're going to add a new place so this is going to be solarian number of sections right now it's going to be two I might increase it and make it a little bit more depending on where I want to put it this is charisma the ability score that's used for solarians is charisma so now I can minimize this get rid of that so first of all we're doing graviton mode and photon mode now what I do is when I stat this stuff is I like to put the details here so I copy it here and paste it so that way they don't have to jump back and forth between their abilities page and their actions page if they don't remember what it is they can just put it there alright so we're gonna go graviton mode I'm gonna change this to just graviton and photon and the short description is plus one reflex the reflex Alright, what happened to this? There it is. Alright, and so the source is Core Rulebook. Class is Solarian. Level 1. It is a special feature. And here, 
here's the info. Alright, so now we lock it. So, we're going to go ahead and see if we can uh, successfully code it. Overburdened. He doesn't have any inventory. How can he be overburdened? Alright, I don't know what's happening there, but anyway, I'm not going to worry about that. Go back to my actions. So we have switch this to standard there we go preparation okay okay that's fine so what we're going to do is going to right click on this line here and we're going to add an action we're going to add an effect an effect so you can open it up or you can just type in here I prefer to open it up the first time, make sure I understand what I'm seeing. So it goes to yourself, it doesn't go away, because you can turn it on and off. You put what it is, and it should be Reflex colon one. Let's see if that's right. So now we go to his main page, and his reflex is normally plus zero. You rolled a one. Um, Atomic Hero Squad, hey, we're rolling up characters for a Starfinder one-shot that I'm doing. An introduction to Starfinder, something I've been hinting at for a couple years now with you and Dan and Zinlu get you guys uh, test have you tested out I've run it a couple times um, for other people and I'm meeting with some more friends this weekend and uh, I'm going to be showing it to them too doing a little bit more wonder today very nice those of you who don't know the Mario uh, Nintendo came out with another Mario game and Atomic Hero Squad was demonstrating it since it came out and I will say uh, as far as side scrollers go it is extremely well done very uh, so much variation um, each level is different the how that interacts the look uh, it's just for what it is it's an, it's an amazing game they did a great job Mario Wonder if you want to see it check it out go to uh, Atomic Hero Squad it's Atomic underscore Hero Squad uh, and check him out on the Twitches he's there every Monday every Sunday through wow if I can't talk every Monday through Friday early in the morning from uh, his time on the East Coast 8 to noonish 8 30 to noonish my time it's 5 30 to 9 so check him out all right so i'm looking at trying to get this when this guy he is a solarian so he can pull the power of gravity into him and it makes him harder to <laughs> push around and stuff so his reflex goes up 
I'm trying to remember how to code that. So let's see. Let's start with. Heavy stuff. That's right, man. Heavy stuff. Let's see if this will do it. I wonder if it has to be caps. I don't think it does. I wonder if it's REF. Eh, let's try a couple different ways and see what it works. See if it works. Alright, so we go here. We get rid of the one that was there. We add the new one and we roll it. Eleven. Nope, it did not add it. So we'll, we will work it in here. We'll try reflex one. In all caps, nope. Uh, I don't know what else it would be. It's, uh, this is a saving throw. So let's try save. Colon reflex one. Nope. Alright, so I don't know what it is. We're just going to make it here. Say plus one to reflex. Save. And we'll just have to. Uh, manually add it when it comes up all right so we've got this here for his graviton mode and now we add photon mode add an item why isn't it adding it there it is I was being impatient So now we go back to this stellar revelation. I mean, uh, stellar modes. So when you pull in the power of the sun, the photon energy, it adds damage to your weapon. Plus one insight bonus to damage rolls. So we're going to go photon mode. Short description, plus one damage. Open it up, because again, I like to have it so the character doesn't have to go to a different page. They can just click over here and get the details. Level Juan, and then copy and pasty. Unlock uh, it again. Boom, and now it's ready to go. This one, I do know how to actually code it. So, what you do is make sure you're in this box here, right click. Over here, add action, damage, damage, and it's very simple. You can just go open this up, plus to the damage, because we're not doing a die, it's just flat. So we're adding an item. There's no specific type, there's no die, 
is not my level or anything, just a flat bonus of one. So as long as he is in um, oh my bad that is not what you're supposed to do ignore everything you just saw remove the action right click action it's an effect to yourself so I remember I mentioned you don't have to open it up you can just apply yourself I'm a silly person. All right, so what is it? It is photon mode. DMG space one. All right. So because I want to self never perfect. Make sure I'm not messing up things. We're gonna open up the comet tracker. Add it. There it is. So now when he goes, he doesn't have anything. He does have his horns. All right, what is going on? Is it not all caps? I could have sworn it was all caps. Maybe this should be a semicolon. Uh, I'm questioning everything. What is going on? Pretty sure you don't need the plus, but uh, we'll. Try it out. There we go. Holy shnikes. I was getting worried. Alright, so it should be. Let me type it here. It is a semicolon here. DMG colon. I don't know that it needs the plus one. Let's see. I don't think it sh needs the plus one. I'm going to try it. No, it does not. I was correct. All right. So there we are. It is set and ready to go. So it's photon mode, whatever it is. The reason I put photon mode there is because, especially Starfinder, you end up with really long stat blocks on the combat tracker. Just so many different effects affecting you. So this tells you if you just had DMG1, it'd be like, where's this damage from? Why is it there? Uh, this explains, oh, it's from the, go the photon mode ability. All right, stellar mode is done we're going through you can now close all this close it now we have stellar revelations so as you gain experience they uncover new secrets about the powers of energy gravity stars fundamental sources of cosmic power that grant you the ability to channel these forces in potent powers so, you learn Black Hole and Supernova at level one. So you have two to start with. So again, we're gonna open this up. Graviton, we're gonna open up, click. Black Hole, Black Hole, San Magica. Black hole. Okay. Um, you can pull any number of creatures within 20 feet of you closer. You can choose which ones 
are pulled and which ones are not. They make a save. So I'm going to say pull creatures closer. I'm going to put in parentheses 20 so that they know how far it is. Now again, I'm going to open this up and say what it is, man, what it is. So if you're missing how I'm opening these up, by the way, it's these little symbols here. Starfinder core rule book. Class is Solarian. Feature is Stellar Revelation. Level 1. And here is the info. So you unlock it. It's only read what? Ooh, that means I'm going to have to type all this. Um, well, I don't have a choice, so let's get to it, shall we? When you're fully graviton attuned as a standard action, you can pull. any number of creatures within 20 feet of you closer friend foe doesn't matter you choose which creatures are affected And which ones aren't, just to make sure you understand what you're doing. Each target must make, must succeed at a fortitude, rather fortitudinous, save or be pulled. 10 feet towards you. The rest of it's not important. Um, I am going to add after you use this revelation. You immediately become unattuned. All right, skim through it, make sure I didn't make a typo. Lock it. Bam. So that's the black hole. It's very cool. So now we need to code in that save. So we right click in the box, add action. This is a cast. You come here, click on the plus symbol to open it up. So when you're using your stellar revelations, it is to save. This is a fortitude save. This isn't. Um, class difficulty check there is no damage but 
There you go. So that's how that works. Open up the combat tracker again. And you just roll and click. So he failed. All right, and so then, uh, and all it does is just pull them 10 feet closer so I don't have to have any kind of effect added to their ability, you know, to their the combat tracker or anything else. It just pulls them closer and they're good to go. Supernova is part of Graviton, I mean, Photon. So we add another one. Supernova, so much better than the boring Novas. Or the standard Novas. All right, so let's see Supernova. Um, short description. So the whole thing says when you're fully attuned as a standard action you can deal 1d6 fire damage plus 1d6 per level to all creatures within 10 feet of you. So the short description is explode dealing damage in 10 feet radius so again I'm going to put 10 radius that is for Robin's utterly smart smart cows are from California utterly and for atomic there you go there's your pun for about the heavy stuff dude so we definitely will need to do a bunch of stuff for this um, first of all let's add it the details in source Starfinder Core Rulebook Class Solarion Feature Stellar Revelation Level 1 When When you're fully attuned Photon attuned as a standard action you can deal 1d6 fire damage plus 1d6 additional fire damage per Solarian level to all creatures, great and small, within ten feet of you. A creature. That succeeds at a reflex save takes half damage. The rest of it is talking about stuff at a higher level. Lock it. Okay, so now we need to code this. So you right click on it, add action. This is definitely a cast. 
So the first thing they have to do is make a reflex save. So this is a save reflex to class DC. On save, the damage is half on success. Now we add damage. Right click, add action, damage. They are what is 1d6 plus 1d6 per level. They are first level, so bloop, 2d6 type, fire. Fire flew from his fingertips as he rosened up his bow. All right, and cover tracker. So we drop this on him, save, and then we drop the damage. He failed, so he takes all six damage. Let's see if we can get him to save. Make sure it only gives him half. There we go. 19 is a success. Half. There we go. Perfection, baby. Perfection. Alright, so we have our Solarian. Supernova is Stellar Revelation is coded. Black Hole is coded. Alright, so all of his crap is, class crap is done now. So going back here to the ability spells, now we do skill ranks. So you get so many skill ranks per level based on your class and your intelligence. He has five. Remembering his special ability as a Zagan, I mean as a Noir, he will get a bonus to his survival and piloting. I don't care about survival right now, so we are, but we are going to do the piloting. Give him one. So then he will also get a racial bonus. So if you look at the abilities, it says... In addition, a noir with one or more ranks in piloting or survival, plus two racial bonus to skills with that skill. So R2, RA is two for racial. So he has a plus six to piloting, even though his dexterity gives him a plus zero. Which is very nice. Very, very nice. Alright, so we'll definitely give him athletics because he's a big boy. Uh, we will give him culture because we gave him that as a special ability. I have two more left. Um, how about intimidate because he's a big boy with four horns. And perception is always nice. Alright, so there's our five spent skill ranks. These are all the bonuses that he has. So skill ranks is done. So now we go to the feet. All right, so everybody in Starfinder gets a level one feet. He is a Solarian. Um, I prefer going to the Archives of Nethys for the feats. But I think all I'm going to do is just, I'm just going to give him an improved initiative. I know what that does. It will work for him because he wants to go first. Type in an any I N I T I in a T. Make sure it, I was correct. Yep, there are no prerequisites for it. Drop it over here, improved initiative. Again, I put what level it is, it's level one. Right now it doesn't matter, but as you go up, it will get more and more and more and more. Feats, so it's good to know which ones you got at which level. And then open up the plus symbol here, because he has a dex of zero. He really needs a bonus to his initiative. Um, so, initiative miscellaneous. Four. So he'll now have at least. So now when he rolls initiative, he'll get a plus four. Ten. See? That's awesome. 
14 instead of 10 because his dex is so crappy. Alright, so we're done with the feet. Next is equipment. So I set up a parcel for new characters, making life very simple. We go here to inventory, drag the parcel, and it fills in everything, all of his stuff. Now when we go to actions, you see he has Batons, grenades, horns, pulse caster pistol with 20 rounds. 20 rounds. And you'll see his horns and his baton. He does his attack and stuff is much better. Does it? Uh, ch -ch -ch damage. It does. Okay. So we're going to add the horn the damage strength to his horns strength there it is no what just happened why didn't it add it what now it's gone This was 1d4 plus his strength. And now it's not. All right, well, I'm just going to presume it is a glitch for the moment. Make sure, yeah, they are equipped. Let me unequip it. That's so weird. I don't know what happened. I don't understand. That's all right. Okay, so his equipment is done. Notes, pages, and language. So he's a noir. So we'll go to notes. So first of all, Gender, age, height, weight, so the gender is male. So we're going to open up the noir race and see what it says. Go here to races and go to Noir Pale Minotaur like creatures with formidable frames horns, hooves This is the stock image of a noir, which I already showed you earlier. Alright, but this does not tell us anything about them. That's one thing that I would like Starfinder and D&D &D to be more consistent on. Have a little box or part of the... Just like you do with hit points, size... For NPCs, monsters, have it with NPCs and races. Simple things like age, height, weight. How hard would that be? <coughs> Whoa. All right, so going back under campaign, under NPCs, let's see what they say for, because you can run into noirs as NPCs. So let's see, we have a noir enforcer and a noir specialist. Go to other. Here we go. All right, noirs are simple, blah, blah, blah. Trace their origins to Galarian. 
Blah blah blah. Notable items. Even their ho declared home is Absalom Station, so that lets me know where his home planet is. Noir stands between seven and seven and a half feet tall and weighs about 300. So we have two of the three. It talks, says as they age, but doesn't say what rate they age. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and go seven and a half, seven and a half feet tall, weighs 300 pounds, perfect. Weight, 300. Height, we'll go seven foot. Five inches. Ha ha. You thought guys thought I was gonna do a higher net. I'm gonna tell say he is twenty-two. Homeworld Absalom Station. So the reason that matters is that you start with your homeworld language, your race language. So because Absalom Station doesn't have a language when we open up our languages here, we can pick anyone we want. I'm thinking Isoki would be a good one because there are a lot of Isoki on Absalom Station. So we're going to say Isoki. Those are the little rat men. Noir for his class. I mean his race. Now for his intelligence mod is plus one. So he gets one more rank for one more language there and his culture is rank of one so he has an extra one so he has two more languages he can know so we're going to give him all right looking through here um Draconic, why not? And Sheeran. All right, so that's his stuff. Again, players would be able to pick all these out themselves. Equipment, languages. So we're set, we're done. He is ready to go, ready to be chosen by the players last one we're going to do is let's go to images let's go to gray i don't remember if these are if it's e y it must be a y yep there they are all right bam bam uh oh exploded the world okay Interstellar species players. Why is this not working? Okay, that's weird. All right, so yes, this is the grays. I guess they do have nose holes, huh? I thought they didn't have nose noses. They have noses. They just have the orifice. All right, aliens, alien. Yep. So this is a playable race. I want to look at my modules. Interstellar species, what's going on with that? All right, so we wait for Fancy Ground to catch up. Galactic might, or might not, you know. Uh, oh, magic, uh -huh. I can't read. All right, so, interstellar species, I have this stupid thing. Parcels, images, right here, images, cover, <coughs> interesting, I, there is no, Marigoy, yeah, eh. monkey people, <coughs> I don't see anything that says gray, so, 
uplifted bear. That's cool. Look at the chapter opening real quick. I like that, that's a good uh, artwork there. Nice, I like these. Those are some nice nice pictures of There's our noir again. Uh uh huh. When we just finished. Patras. Um sh the uh I forget what they're called, but they're rock people. Those are all raises that I picked for my people to use I could do a contemplative too. They're just giant floating brains with little Barbie sized bodies. But that's alright, I'll stick with the one I've got, the my Baratha. Alright, so the point is there is no other picture over <coughs> Whoa, that was cool. Yeah, I agree. That was some really cool stuff. The uh, the contemplative um, is images. Ooh, an armored one. Ooh, interesting. All right, so let's show you some of these. So that's the traditional one I've always seen. There give you perspective they're about three and a half four feet long and so two feet high and then their little bodies are like 12 inches little small guys um, see what these other contemplative pictures are here's there you go another one wow 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 and this is armored Oh, the body itself is armored, okay. The brain isn't. A shock. As he's reading and using his mental abilities to manipulate things. So, yeah. Those are contemplatives. It's a race, and the yes, they are playable race. If I'm not mistaken. I've never had a character play one. Am I being, am I going nuts or what? Let's see. Contemplative, I was right. Ha! Anyway, going back to the gray. So, um, go to our characters selection under players. I have nine to choose from. All of these are all done, except for this last one, and his name is redacted. Eh, eh. I cannot take credit for the idea for the name because it's from a Starfinder podcast I listened to. Um, I have there's critical there's a cosmic crit, but the one that has redacted is as I forget. Uh, there's two roll for combat. Roll for comp. No, it's not. It is. Um, come on, following back following it is roll for combat uh maybe no no, 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 no. cosmopunk 
So there's Cosmopunk and Cosmic Crit. Um, let's see. Alright, yes, so it's Cosmic Crit has the gray in it. It's a play, he's a character, and um, his name is redacted. While you're here, perhaps you could show me something in Fantasy Ground Unity. I'm having a hard time figuring out how to do it. Okay, what's up? So, we go pull up my ass at. If I know how to do it, I will try to figure it out. Okay, so this is while she's form formulating her query. Let's uh, at least add his token in. All right, so there's his token, and here is his portrait. <laughs> Let's see, can we put that as a portrait? No, I like the white background better. All right, I have a map. How do I put the variations of this map into one map as layers in Fantasy Grounds? I don't know how to combine all the maps into one map in Fantasy Grounds to use line of sight and stuff all on one map. Okie dokie. So, it, oh, the simpler the map you have, the easier this is going to be. Um, so, let's go to our images under campaign. And we'll find a map. So, I have a crap ton of maps. Let's go with the Acme Fantasy Grounds Battle Map 5. Okay, so here we go. So this has a bunch of stuff on it. So you said that there are variations. Okay, it's three images. They're all the same dimensions. Same map basically with just slightly different interiors, if that makes sense. It does. So, this map, let's take a look at. Alright, so here we go. We have two different maps that are the same dimension, if I'm not mistaken. Let's verify that for sure. One fifteen. One fifteen. All right. So <laughs> let's play with this idea for a moment. Delete pointers. Remove it. Okay. So you have a couple options. One, you can combine the maps, use portals to teleport them to different places. But if you want them all to be on top of each other say they're dimension hopping or some people they're all in the same place but some of them are seeing it in different ways then you can make them literal layers on top of each other so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and make a brand new map so I don't mess up any of these images You can either click here to add an item or right click here to make it. So let's do plus. We're going to call it Robin's Layers. And let's see if I'm right about this. Because um, I could be totally wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Let's see.
there was a way you can just pull this as a layer. Um, what am I doing? That's wrong. Let me, oh, let me go to images, images, and battle. All right, so this one is five. It's pulling it as this. Why is it pulling it as that? I want it to be. I thought you could do it as an asset image. Um, all right, what is? Okay, yeah, you just pull it and drop it. All right, good, good so far. Let's uh, close, dang, gum it. Boom. Oh, all right, so layer, delete. All right, so now we go to battle. I have to go all the way back up. Try that again. Alright, here we go. So the one I was looking at was five. Drag it, drop it. There we go. Okay. So you open up your assets. From here, you can drag and drop it. Go to layers. Open the assets and drag the map onto the tile spot, and then click onto the map. Oh, that's even easier. Yeah. So we've got the battle map, and now I'm going to add. The uh, second one to it, take it and drop it right on top. Boom. And there you go. There's your two maps. Boom. Now it's on top of each other. And then when you want to switch between them, you click it like this. You can also go to um, the layer and go to the tint and make it sh so if you want to like transform it so you're in one and then all of a sudden the magic happens and it sh you teleport to this one. Drake does that a lot. So now it's still there, you just can't see it. It's gone. Um, because it's transparent or you can just turn off the visibility here and make it invisible to switch between the two but like I said if you want a cool effect um, just turn down the transparency and it will change back and forth there you go so I hope that answers your questions thank you so much that's even easier Excellent. I'm glad I was able to help. Uh, now, that keep in mind, you still have the the, the uh, effects and stuff and some of the line of sight from the layer underneath it. So keep that in mind because you will, would need to uh, turn it off if they both have line of sight. So if we turn off this, now we have this line of sight. But if you turn it off, Turn this back on now. Um, that line of sight may still be there, so you you know will need to turn off the use walls. Uh, and so, it, as a DM, I can still see it's there, but it's not really there. Um, and there, so cool. Hopefully, that answered your question.
right, so let's get back to Redacted. Redacted is our gray. So I was thinking of making him a Technomancer also. Later on, um, it did perfectly. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, so I was, oops. Go to my notes, player, notes, character creation. There we go. So looking at what we have, I have a Witch Warper, I have an Empath, I have a couple soldiers. <coughs> oh, I forgot to say that Zagon is a Salarian. And he is armor. I'll just say Solarian because they don't know the different trip. Alright, um, so if you look at the classes, there's a lot of classes, and don't say, like I mentioned, I don't want to do Biohacker. Um, I have one Envoy, they, they're not really that exciting. Um, I don't want to deal with the mechanic. Mystic, maybe, because they're spellcasters. Um, a Technomancer more than likely um, and then another Witch Warper. Uh, I just don't know enough about evolutionists. I know they deal with uh, evolutionary points and things so they're a little complicated. Um, I think I'm gonna go with Mystic actually. Uh, let's, let's, we're gonna go with Mystic. Alright so with a Mystic you want Wisdom key ability score is wisdom now, high charisma can also help you in social situations while greys don't like those situations and don't do well in them anyway so first thing we do is race grey check done next theme so the theme is the background we want wisdom So looking at our handy dandy chart from the core rule book, you can see that wisdom is here. The only one that gives you a bonus is a priest to wisdom. Let's see if the new one has anything that does wisdom cop character operations manual. I don't think so. Is it sensate? Con Street Rat is Dex Grifter is Intelligence Alright so do we want to make him a priest? Normally I wouldn't care but the thing is the whole concept of Greys is that even in this world nobody likes them, nobody trusts them. Um Where is the campaign? NPCs. They are still active probers. So they like probing people. No one knows what planet or even galaxy the Greys call home. Reports of their unnerving abductions, nightmarish paralysis, and sometimes mysterious experiments have been collected from countless worlds for as long as starships have sailed in the dark spaces of the universe. What happened to my image? So I say all that to say they wouldn't be a priest they wouldn't be a law enforcement officer these are creepy guys that nobody likes and nobody understands greys communicate only telepathically even among their own kind their faces and black eyes show little emotion or reaction and while they are graceful they usually move with deliberate intention 
often spending several moments in thought before committing to an action or a movement. This unscrutability renders them enigmatic and disturbing to most other races. Um, I'm actually going to put this in the notes. So I think he, I'm thinking Grifter or Street Rat would be a good choice. So let's see, Grifter gives you intelligence, Street Rat gives you dex. Um, Oh no, Grifters was out as like a con man. Street rat it is. All right, so we'll add this to them. Boom. All right, so redacted is now, that's his theme. So we're gonna go to his notes. I'm gonna add some of this in here. Unlock it, read only what? All right, I'm not going to type all that in. Uh, let's see, go to, what does it say under races for player races? It doesn't say anything. That's silly. All right. Um, all right, so we'll quick, uh, I guess I'll just, can I link it? Nope. All right. Boo, I'm not gonna bother. I could make you, you make a copy, which will then be, you're then able to manipulate, but it's not worth it to me. Okay, so let's go, he is non-gender, uh, age is unknown. Height, they are small, so he is four foot two. Weight is going to be about 75 pounds, very thin and small. Homeworld, I'm also going to say Absalom Station. Alright, so he's going to know, he's also going to know Isoki, he's going to know Sheeran. I mean, uh, La Shunta, because they also speak telepathically. But we'll go get back to those. Uh, I'm, I am deviating from the plan, folks. Sorry. All right, so here we go. We have our race. We have our theme. We have our... Okay, so now it's ability scores. So as I mentioned, ability scores in Starfinder, to start off with, are very simple. You just get eight. So... He's going to be a mystic. He doesn't need strength. We're going to leave his strength at 8. Um, we want his dex up, and we want his wisdom up a lot, so, um, because the wisdom is his main stat. So we're going to go with 6 points to wisdom. I'm actually going to take away 1 from his charisma. So that'll give us five points left. We're going to go ahead and add three of them to his dex and two of them to his constitution. So you're not really supposed to do that, but um, I'm a GM. I can do whatever the hell I want. And these things, like I said, they're so creepy and people don't like them at all. So having a minus one to charisma just makes sense. All right, so uh, th those are his stats. So his stats are locked in. Now we go to his class. He's going to be a mystic. Boom. All right, so now we go to ability 
things, uh, abilities, and spells. Go here, click. So great. Well, again, we're just going to open all these up, and then we will work our way down them. So we start at the bottom and go up. Click, 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 click. Gray magic. They gain the following spell-like ability. It's a caster for these levels equal to the gray's level. So they can do mind thrust. Ooh, that's a good spell. Days and telepathic message. Cool. So let's go to spells. Mystic. So we're going to right click. We're going to add a spell class. This is gray magic. Uh, he can do one a day, so spells per day is one level one. And then spells known is one level one and two level zero. We're going to make the ability wisdom. And we're going to click the big plus to close that. Level 1, it is go over here to under character spells. It is mind th 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 thrust. So this is too big. It's filling up the screen. So anywhere on here you can then hold left, I mean hold sh uh, control, left click and drag to make this smaller. And now I can control it from the bottom. But first thing we're doing is mind thrust. Drop it onto where it says level one. All right, so this is base. This is a little confusing for people who don't know much about this. So I'm going to delete this one and put in the other one. Just put in Mind Thrust 1, because that's all you can do. Um, there we go, see? Mentally deal 2d10 damage to one target. We'll save for half. Which is nice, okay? And then... Telepathic message is level zero. Oops, wrong one. That's the wrong one. Telepathic message down here, level zero. And then days. Days, there it is. Glory days. Alright, so now he has his gray magic. We will close this. Gray magic. So we will. Um... Oh, wait a minute. What happened to the mind thrust? There it is. Alright, so we're going to go into stamp preparation. Spell like abilities, spontaneous points. Eh, we'll leave it as spell like abilities. This is a spontaneous caster. Once a day, once he uses it, it then goes away. Okay. Perfect. So these are all set and ready to go. Gray magic is done. We will minimize all that. Now we're going to phase. Grays can shift out of phase to reality as a reaction and gain a plenty of 20% mischance against one attack. A gray can use this ability a number of times per day equal to its con mod. All right, well, that's cool. So the con mod is one. All 
So I'm going to Actions, right click to add a whole another category. I'm going to say NISC. Fine, I'll spell it out. Miscellaneous. Miscellaneous. Number of sections for it now is going to be one. And this is going to be Rach. Rachel. That's funny. Rachel. Rachel. I wonder if my follow age is working yet. It would help if I spelled it right. The API is currently broken. Boo. That's not. Alright, so racial, and now we add another thing below us. Below this, this is going to be phase. And the answer to this is one per day. Quick answer is 20% miss, miss chance versus one attack. Okay, we open it up and we source is where are the grades from? Go to races. Starfinder Alien Archive 1, okay? Starfinder Alien Archivi class. Not, it's a racial trait. Unlock it. Highlight it, copy, paste. So if you're wondering what this is, it moved it in. So to ch change that, you just change the text to normal text by hitting Control-1, or you can also right click, go here to Paragraph Types, and just go to Body Text. Boom. It was as a list. so. We just change it to body text, which is control one, and that fixes that. Okay, close it. Next is connection. This is so now that's what the race the, the grays do. Um, now we have why does it say one? Close that. All right. So there we are. This is not class. This is other. Okay. So going back to the abilities, we now get to pick which connection they have. Um, So there's the Empath, the Healer, a Mind Breaker, Star Shaman, and a Xeno Druid. So considering he is a Gray, I think I'm going to go with Mind Breaker. You use your raw skill and understanding of the mind structure to crush and demoralize your enemy. Um, bluff and Intimidate are the associated skills. So Bluff. Uh, that would actually probably be pretty good. So he he would get mind thrust. We 
but he already has that. Um, and the connection is whenever foe deals damage to you, you can spend a resolve point, shift some of the pain back onto that foe. Okay. Interesting, interesting, mind breaker. It's not bad, not bad to see. The other choice would be empath. We already have one. What is Akashic? You're linked to the collective knowledge of every sentient species that have ever lived that's held in the Akashic record, an astral library of perfect psychic records of every movement in history. You might be an ancient lore key, sir, keeper, an inquisitive student of the occult, an intuitive consulting detective, or a secret hoarding spy. Culture and mysticism. A case acknowledge is your identify, augury. You gain a channel of skill. Each day when you recover spell slots, you can tap into the Akasic record, enabling to choose one profession skill and add that to your list of associate skills for the channel class skill feature. Wow, that's pretty impressive. Um, this would be great if they were actually doing a campaign and it would come into more, f more into play better. I think I'm going to stick with Mindbreaker. I'll just go with Mindbreaker. All right, so we take this, we drag it over here to class abilities under connection. And it drops it in there, mind breaker. Connection power. It should go under connection power, is it not? No, it's not. All right, whatever. Delete item. <laughs> okay, so. We will now do share pain. Resume, uh, okay. Reduce the damage you take from the attack by your mystic level. And the vote takes an equal amount of damage. All right, um, that's stupid. Because only does one damage back. I'm going to do two times your mystic level. By two times your mystic level to a maximum of the attack's damage. That's just stupid. You're one point of damage. You're level 10. Level 15. Ready to take over the world. They're doing 80 and 100 points of damage. And you're doing... Mark. One point back. 15 points back. That's stupid. Alright. Anyway. Share pain. Let's go ahead and go here to, to actions. So we have miscellaneous. We're going to have open this back up to add another section. And this is mind breaker. We're going to add share pain. Reflect to X level damage. Gamage. All right, so now we open this up. We go to the source. 
I don't know what source. This is not core rulebook. Is Mindbreaker part of the core rulebook? I guess it is. Alright, so. Starfinder core rulebook. Class Mystic. Feature connection. Power. Level one. Unlock. Cape. Paste. Close, close, close. All right, um, now we need to right click, add an action. This is going to be a cast. Do they have to, yeah, they have to make a will save. So this is will DC half on damage. Why is it saying 12? 8 plus 4 is 12. Okay, that's why. Alright, and then we add right click, add action, add damage. And this is plus item. Alright, so this is multiplier. This is times stat. I think that might be what was the class level. Times even, odd. Okay, now this is all the stats. Class level. So we're having two. Two times class level. isn't it showing it maximum caster level or ability for multiple let's just see is it one no All right. why isn't this um, working one it says two times class level is class level oh wait a minute wait a minute, wait a minute. that's why class level is one there we go That is why, because I was doing it as a weird class instead of Mystic. There it is. Okay. This is important. Uh, not important. There we go. All right. So that's that. Boom. Mind affecting pain effect. And then the connection spell he got at as a so let's go into this whole connection thing notes we're gonna say he's gonna worship Ioma Day It's bluff and intimidate. Going to skills, bluff, intimidate. Okay, so other stuff will happen um, as part of this bluff and intimidate stuff that he gets. But the first thing he gets is so he already has mind thrust. Um, so I'm going to go ahead. So that's cool because it just means that he will be able to do mind thrust as a mystic using up a spell slot and he'll have another one that he can do um, because of his gray magic so that's nice I'm gonna open these up so that they know
All right, so that's it for his mind breaker da, 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 connection. We have an empath as well, by the way. So they are, um, here's connection spell. We just did that one. Healing touch. Once per day, you can spend 10 minutes magically heal an ally up to five hit points per mystic level. All right, so this will be under actions. This will be under So we're going to have another one. Open this up. Number of sections, three. Okay. And we're just, this is going to be mystic. Plus, this is, I don't know why this says two. This is healing touch. It is a supernatural ability. Ten minutes to heal. Five times level. Open it up, and here we go. So we have we need to correct the spelling on healing. Source again, uh, this one I know is Starfinder Core Rulebook. Class is Mystic. This is a class feature. <coughs> Level 1. And then we go here, we go to right click, add, heal. Target is good because it has to be somebody else. We add the heal item here. This is class level times five. All right, now we have spells. Dun, dun, dun. All right, so this last thing, yes. Going to a handy dandy core rule book. Mystics. Spells per day, nope, don't care, we want Mystic Spells, no, level one, four zero level, and two first, that does not count the Mind Thrust that was given to them. So we go to Spells, we go to Mind Thrust one, we go over here and put an asterisk here because that is part of your special thing, so two first, Four zero. Open up the spells underneath the character. We go to class. Mystic. Level. A zero. All right. So, Void Whisper is the ones that I thought about. Yeah, Void Whisper is amazing. So they have to make a will save. If they fail, they whisper incoherently and take a move action in a random direction. And creatures that begin their turn within 20 feet of the target and can hear it whispering, 
have to make a will save or they become confused. And it lasts one round for every three levels. All right, so Void Whispers is amazing. Um, we will do Detect Magic, sure. I like the idea of Ghost Sound for this guy. Glowing Wall, what is that? light with area of up to eight ten foot squares barrier of light colored as you choose springs into existence you can form the wall into a vertical or horizontal plane each ten foot square must join another the light within five feet of the wall increases to normal light and out to another five feet you can change the color of the light as well Interesting. Um, there is a telekinetic projectile, but um, I've only got one left. That light wall thing is pretty cool. Um, he has days already as a gray. So I think instead I will do I'm going to go with the wall. Let's just go for it. It's fine. Glowing wall. All right, and then we switch down here to level one and he gets two alright so I like this guy's self yeah so he's gonna do this guy's self what is the duration on that um, 10 minutes per level. So if he needs to, he can disguise himself. And then let's do dampen spell. Uh, maybe, maybe, let's see. Does he want to protect himself? Nah, I don't care about that right now. Uh, psychic sonar. Cone shaped burst. Wendy eight in a cone. I like it. Psychic sonar, level one. Boom. Perfect for him. Okay, so we have his spells now. I 
All right, so that's it for that skill point, skill ranks. All right, so let's go ahead and he gets eight. You'll notice the last guy we had talked about had four. He has eight, so we're gonna go. He starts with um, his connection power was uh, bluff and intimidate, wasn't it? Let's see. Yep, bluff and intimidate. So absolutely, one in bluff, one in intimidate. Mysticism, absolutely. Uh, perception is always good, since motive is good for him. Maybe stealth. How many do I have? Three more stealth. Medicine. And maybe culture. Disguise. We'll go ahead and go with disguise. No, I don't think so. We'll go with uh, who uses spells to do that. I'm gonna go with culture. All right. So those are his skill ranks, and now he gets a feat. Uh, that's a good question. Which feet would he want? Um, can you get the extra resolve points at this level? Extra resolve. What are, you, what are the requirements? Character level 5. Nope. Okay. Amplified glitch, can he do that? Nope, he can't. Uh, let's see, adaptive fighting. You have to have three more combat feats, okay. Accelerated recovery, it requires con 13, he has 12, all right. Um, Compact form, flight species trait, so he doesn't have that. Um, let's see. Has to be fifth level for that. Well, I'm thinking. Well, I like, uh, I think I'm just going to go with, um, that would be good if we were doing that. Let's do, I'm just gonna go with skill bonuses.
Enhanced resistance, you have to have base attack bonus of plus four. Environmental adaptation, he has con 13, he only has 12. Um, base attack bonus plus one, he doesn't have that yet. Let's make him fast. Yeah, we'll just make him fast. So it gives him a speed of 40. So we hit the plus symbol here on here. This covers all of these. And his speed is 10 because he has a bone. Uh, he has the feet. So we go to abilities. There we go. Now he's fleet. Again, we put level one. Close this. Equipment. All right. So we go to parcels. Open up his inventory. It drops this in. And then um, the notes page. Okay, so going to this back to skills, he has one in culture. His intelligence is plus two, so that's three. Plus his race, homeworld, so he has five languages he can know. Right now he knows three. So one, two. So we will give him Vesk. And Noir, why not? Okay. Everything else, we've got all this information here. Eh, I'll, I'll say that he knows what he is. So I'm going to say he is 15. Actually, let's, let's make him a lot older. Let's make him 40. All right, so that's it. All right, so we have all of our characters finished, ready to go. We have all nine of them from which to choose. So should be f a fun time as they we take a look and, and try these new this new system for them. Um, it's my favorite system. I love Starfinder better more than any other game I've played. Although the Mutant Epoch is very close, TME. Sadly, Fantasy Grounds doesn't have the Mutant Epoch in Fantasy Grounds yet, um, but maybe one day. Fingers crossed. So. Thanks for hanging out, Robin, Atomic. I appreciate you both. Um, tonight, we're doing a little bit of Drake. Tomorrow, we have Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, so, come back, check it out. Don't forget to like, subscribe, whatever else you do. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much. And yes, I will see you soon.